Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Dustin Telford. Uh, I uh, work for Children's Hospital Colorado. Um, my employer is HSS Incorporated, uh, a third-party provider of services. I'm the manager there at the uh, hospital at this time. Um, I'm going to speak today about something that I think is important for us in our daily lives, uh, but also, and because you're at the MD Expo, more importantly about how you can work through this process to help you uh, outperform what you're maybe doing today or, or maybe teach others uh, this same process. Uh, <clears throat> creative problem solving and engineering skills. Yesterday I was supposed to speak about accreditation, kind of a dry topic. Hopefully I would have made it very interesting and, and I will be speaking about it I guess in two weeks according to John Creek. But I propose that I also speak about something that was a little bit more, um, I guess, artsy, if you will. Uh, when it comes to our technical field, we tend to think about um, where we are uh, in relationship to engineering. But we don't always tend to think about where we are in the continuum of healthcare and the delivery there. Again, I want to emphasize that I work at a children's hospital right now, and we've got a giant balloon boy outside that hospital um, just because of the creative nature of, of our kids. But adults, the same, things, the same thing applies. Creative problem solving is a, is a method uh, to identify a problem, work through that problem, and then implement solutions around that problem to actually take action on the, the problem that you have identified. I'm gonna walk you through the process of creative problem solving and we'll stop at some times to just kind of talk about maybe some examples either in personal life or um, in your technical uh, life or your managerial life that might apply. It isn't just brainstorming. A lot of people think that creative problem solving is just collecting a bunch of ideas, writing those down, thinking about every possible angle. It, brainstorming is certainly part of the creative problem solving process, which you'll see later, but it is not uh, the only thing. So a lot of people tend to think it's just, uh, well, let's brainstorm a bunch of ideas and hope that we work out uh, the best solution from that. Creative ideas don't just happen. Um, they, they occur for a reason. You're either trying to achieve a goal, trying to solve a problem, or you're trying to innovate. You're trying to create something new that didn't exist. Maybe it's a better work environment, maybe it's a better relationship, maybe it's a new business that you're going to go into. Uh, you may recognize uh, Albert Einstein. Um, I appreciate this quote a lot. To raise new questions, new possibilities, to regard old problems from a new angle, uh, requires creative imagination and marks real advance in science. Well, his quote could have gone further if you know anything about Albert Einstein, but about personal relationships, about what you do on your motor vehicle, uh, anything in life. There are seven steps to creative problem solving. One you'll see right in the middle is actually to brainstorm, but it's only one component. We need to specify the problem, explore the problem, voice creative challenges to that problem or problems that you've identified, brainstorm, assemble and assess the ideas, and then develop an action plan, and then just do it. You don't want to waste all this time thinking about how you're going to maybe solve a problem and not actually come to some sort of resolution. Now, certainly it can happen. There might be a limit. Maybe it's a financial limit that your organization has. Uh, maybe there's a time limit. But I'm going to show you how to break these down into components that you'll feel satisfied, generally speaking, because you'll identify those limits ahead of time. You need to specify the problem. Maybe I, I, I've missed the target on this audience, but I'm a little bit of a tech geek. And this is Hal from 2001 Space Odyssey. And uh, Hal was uh, very logical up to a point in the book and in the movie. And uh, he, he has a, a way of looking at things, and it's a single and solitary way of looking at things. I'm suggesting differently. What is the real problem? Now, I, I was talking to my wife earlier this morning about this presentation, 
And I'm going to give you uh, an example to kind of run through on this one. What do you really want to achieve? What is stopping you from doing it now? I mean, is it really a problem? And how will you measure your success? So here's a good example of something that you might think is a problem. You might think that I want to overcome shyness. Well, shyness might not be the real problem. You want to start asking yourself some questions about what, those, what the real root of that problem is. Um, do you want to overcome shyness because, let's say, you want to be able to network a little bit better in the hospital setting? You want to know who the people are in facilities, in IT, in administration, and be able to converse with them, ask them for that favor sometimes to vote on something that you know, you know is a little controversial, equipment purchase or whatever that everybody else thinks the other vendor is better. Well, if you start asking this question, as you can see, you, didn't really, you started with saying, I want to overcome shyness. But what you're really delving down into is you have a goal in mind. You want to overcome it because you want to do this. Now, the same thing could apply in the case of shyness to saying, I'm new to the area. I want to be able to meet new people and have fun, right? Find similar interests. And that's really the problem, right? The real problem is I want to do this, and I can't do this right now without trying to figure out a solution to it. Are there any limitations? So certainly, there may be limitations even in that one example. The CEO is very busy, right? IT doesn't necessarily want to talk to the biomed guy because they see him as a, tur a wrench turner in some organizations. And facilities in other organizations may see the, uh, the biomed guy as more of an IT guy and doesn't really know how to turn a wrench. Whatever the limitations are, they may be real or they may be perceived. But don't get too bogged down on the limitations. This is Bruce Lee. I know I showed you Albert Einstein. And there's another quote here. It's a great one you, you, about limits. If you always put limits on everything you do, physical or anything else, it will spread into your work and into your life. There are no limits. Uh, there are only plateaus, and you must not stay there. You must go beyond them. But you certainly have to know where you're going to plateau. You're going to reach that plateau, hopefully, not fall off the cliff, and keep going. <clears throat> I'm a little bit of a Monty Python fan, and it looks like somebody else is in the audience. None shall pass. The first and the most important step is to, to realize what the actual problem is. If you haven't done this, don't go through the creative problem solving process. So <clears throat> take another example. In this case, if a, if a nurse reports to you that the defib is broken, have you identified what the problem is that the nurse is having with that piece of equipment if she says it's just broken? You're probably going to have to ask a couple of questions about what the real problem is from her in this case, not from you, about the shyness example that I mentioned. But you're going to have to ask, well, how's it broken? What, what's, what's wrong with it, right? Or what, what, what doesn't it do that it did yesterday? You may have all different techniques, but you've got to ask this question first. If you don't, forget it. You don't want to even go on at least in this sense, in the creative problem-solving process, you're still going to have to fix it. And it's frustrating, I know. The broke tags that were mentioned in the, uh, the keynote uh, this morning. Explore the problem after you've answered what the actual problem is. Depending on the nature of the problem, you might have to spend a little bit more time. You might have to engage some more resources. That might be Google, which actually helped me out a little bit yesterday in finding a service manual. Right? Honestly, I even, th I even said it in front of some very important people, and I said, thank you, Google. And my cousin works for Google, and I almost called him out by name. They wouldn't have known who he is. But you, you may need to engage other resources like people. Now, we probably commonly do this in most cases. You talk to your coworker. You talk to the guy across the street. Uh, you engage with people that maybe you met a couple of years ago, like Mike Lane, right? I, I have 
certainly tried to develop my network so that I can maybe ask the guy that knows a little bit better than I do um, where I can find this resource. And I've done it over and over and over again, even in the last couple of weeks. There's a guy out at the CMIA booth, I can even mention that I talked to him about an equipment acquisition, see if he knew anything about the equipment, because I knew nothing about the equipment and, until he educated me. But you, you need to spend the time on this. Now in the troubleshooting sense, right, technical troubleshooting, you've asked the question, is it, what's, what's broken about it? Now you've got to figure out, are there things you need to do? You need to listen to the equipment. You need to actually um, uh, look at the equipment, the physical condition of the equipment. You need to take some measurements on the equipment. And when it comes to, to engineering problems and that, you need to look at the drawings, right? You need to look at the project plan. You need to figure out what, what the problem is with getting your, to your goal of, say, doing an addition to a, uh, a wing in a hospital or in a whole new hospital, for that matter. Arthur Conan Doyle um, is another favorite of mine uh, with Sherlock Holmes. There's all sorts of reboots of Sherlock Holmes, but I, I saw some of the older Sherlock Holmes and I still like him a little bit more with his, uh, his hat and his pipe. But he says, I never guess. It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Again, take those readings, listen to the equipment, listen to the operator, what's going on with it. Insensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit their theories instead of uh, theories to suit facts. And I've seen this happen, and I've done this myself when I get the call in the shop, and they say, hey, this is, this is doing this, and I'm already, I'm already guessing it's the same thing I saw before. You've got to kind of separate yourself out a little bit from that. It may very well be, but I've seen folks that have stopped themselves, and they'll talk through the process literally in the shop, before they ever go and look at the piece of equipment, right? Before they ever go and sit down at the project, right? Before they ever look uh, to asking the questions about what the real problem is and then exploring the problem. So that's why I appreciate putting this up a little bit. Remember, you've got to have some data to go off of and it's got to be there. It's got to be tangible sometimes um, or most of the time in order for you to succeed. Uh, voicing creative challenges, this sounds all lofty and everything, but it's very simple. You've got to ask, how can I do this? Can, can you do this, for that matter? But how might we do this if it's a team effort? Um, in what ways could I do this? If you can't do it, you're, you may be at an impasse, or you may find that there's another solution to getting it done. Not all of us in this room are biomedical technicians, not all of us are clinical engineers, not all of us are managers, and not all of us are even out of junior high. But the fact of the matter is, is that you might actually be stuck in you being able to do it. There's a we in there. You could also say, how can somebody else do this? How can I put a call in to a service provider or the guy down the street that says he runs a little part-time business and he might be able to come in in the evening and help out with this imaging problem, say, for example. Employ that. It goes back to, did you, do you know your resources? Did you develop some resources, possibly? Or at least did you reach out and look up the term, say, biomed technician in the state of Colorado, and it came up with a couple of hits that said, well, I, I guess there's a guy down the street that maybe I should be familiar with. Uh, creative challenges should be focused and concise, though. They shouldn't be broad. They shouldn't have an and in them. It should be very simple. They should be um, something along the lines of, how can I lose weight? Not, how can I lose weight and overcome shyness? Or, how can I lose weight and um, run a marathon next year? You can certainly have... Uh, several challenges that you put before yourself, but take that and statement out. It's a grammatical thing for that matter too, but just go back and say, how can I lose weight? How can I overcome shyness? You now have two creative challenges ahead of you that might help you with your end goal. But keep it simple. 
when they shouldn't be limiting. Don't limit yourself and say, well, how am I ever going to do this because I've never been able to do this before? Or I've never been successful doing it before? Or I've never done it before? Don't limit yourself at this point because you'll, you'll find that when it comes to brainstorming, you're going to wind up with a, a little bit more, uh, well, let's say, of a problem in trying to come up with several different ways to solve your, your, your goal. No limits. I, I'd love to drive on this road probably, but in a really nice car, I, I don't drive the nicest car, but it gets me to, to work and, and such. But uh, this would be the sign I'd want to see, especially on this day. What I wouldn't want to see is, again, Hal saying, I'm sorry, Dave, um, I'm afraid I can't do that. That's the limit you don't want to have. You also don't want to have people saying that to you. Block them out, right? You can't do that. You can't do that. Unless there is a very particular reason for safety or regulatory compliance, then don't, don't listen to them. There's always a way to figure out uh, the best solution. Think of this, just taking over. Going beyond the boundaries, being your biggest objective. Don't put the limits on there, but be concise about those creative challenges you put before yourself. Now to the brainstorming. Set a lofty goal, and I mean lofty, right? Really put... Um, to terms before you even start brainstorming that you are going to come up with 40, 50 ideas on how to do this. Or as uh, Harrison, my son, who's sitting in the back, will even do this game on this, on brainstorming a little bit and sol problem solving a very short game where we'll say, does it matter? And w uh, what would we do? And we come up with the ridiculous and we come up the, with the plausible solutions to let's say, uh, what was one of them, Harrison? Was it a tiger escapes from the zoo? And we'd say, does it matter? And we go, oh, it probably does, right? We, we, we are concerned about our health and safety. And then we'd say, what? What do we do? What can we do? We can get a gun, right? But then we would also talk about things like, oh, we could somehow tame the tiger, I think was one of the things that we, we came up with. That was a year ago or so, but it was the ridiculous stuff too, but it helped us with the problem solving. The reason I mention lofty, lofty goal is because you almost want to be exhausted with figuring out what the solutions are. What I've, what I've done and what probably all of you have done in different challenges in your life, and let's just take that technical again. You said, well, I, I'll bet you it's this, right? And I'm going to test just this instead of figuring out, maybe I should test a few other things, and then you regret, maybe, like I have at least, and I'll admit I have regretted this a few times, that I haven't gone and said, what are the three possibilities as opposed to the one? Now, you might not be able to come up with 40 possibilities for, you know, a, a, uh, a screen that's dead on a, on, on a C-arm. Anyway, choose one of those creative challenges that you previously adopted, so the creative challenge being, how can I fix this, right? That's a little too broad, it needs to be a little bit more concise, but how can I fix this monitor, right? And then generate ideas. Now the first thing, going back to this, is you have uh, agreed in this case to document in some way, not just keep it in your head and say, well, I thought about this and this. Oh no, yeah, I forgot about that. Keep your brain free and just start writing down or having somebody else write down what those ideas are. Now, if you're in a team and you're trying to figure this out, say you're working with a colleague on a technical issue, say you're working on a multidisciplinary team, again, in the example of trying to uh, set up a new facility or a new wing, when it comes to the brainstorming process, you're going to have to have a scribe especially for that because somebody's going to feel left out at the end of it when they don't get their idea down on paper, right? So, um, and their idea may actually be the best idea of the day because it may be singly the best idea or it could actually be something combined with another idea that's generated. So, generate your ideas, write them down, and keep writing. Document every idea, even the ridiculous ideas. So, if you've set a goal, let's say, 
to write down 40 ideas. It might be pretty, pretty stretched on 31 through 40 to come up with something. But again, I gave you a good example, and in, we've, we sometimes lose this as adults, but as kids, we're a little bit more, we were probably all a little bit more creative in general. But those ridiculous ideas, they might actually work, right? They might actually do the trick where maybe getting a gun, you forgot to get the bullets. Simple guidelines for brainstorming, uh, brainstorming are teams might need a limit on the time. You could go on and on and on. Agree upon that time before. Make sure it's an adequate amount of time. If you have two or three people, it's probably 10 minutes, right? If you have more than that, you can still stick to the 10 minutes or so. But you might want to allow a little bit more time if you've really got a complex problem that you're trying to address. Get your creative energies flowing. And, and, and this is kind of dependent on what you like to do. Tell some knock-knock jokes. It's interesting, I went to a leadership meeting with uh, HSS um, just a couple of weeks ago and our outgoing CEO, uh, he, he told some of the corniest jokes, didn't he, Jonathan? Uh, but they got everybody going in the morning, right? Um, and it could be a walk, it could be a break away from all these other steps that you've gone through until you get to this brainstorming thing, but get, get them going, right? Think outside of the box in this case. And if you have time, after you've done all this brainstorming, right, written down all these ideas, come back the next morning, try it again. If you're not in a hurry. If you're in a hurry and you're troubleshooting, and I know I'm talking to an audience that we all seem like we're in a hurry, right? We put out fires a lot more in this industry than we, our counterparts sometimes do in other healthcare fields like healthcare information technology. We put out the fires sometimes that we, we told somebody it probably would, wouldn't be a good idea. They still did it anyway, right? Or we didn't know they could use it that way. But if you do have the time, come back to it the next morning. Studies show that you are more creative, that most people at least, are much more creative in the morning than they are in the afternoon. So I guess get your groove on in the morning and then uh, just go to work. Once you've got everything do brainstormed, documented, this is where you take a break. Walk away from it for a couple of minutes, right? You might think of one last thing, but you're going to be focused on those last three things that came up in your brainstorming session. Those last three things are going to be the ones that stick in your mind or one that was so great, or it seemed so great when it was said that you focused on that and didn't hear, even hear the last ten that your team uh, went through. <clears throat> so take a break. After that break, review your ideas. Review them all. Look for commonalities. Look for ways to combine some of them. Uh, even the ridiculous ones, like I've mentioned several times, and I'm calling them ridiculous not because they will be ridiculous, possibly, but they seemed ridiculous at, at the beginning. Related ideas can be combined and clustered. Use your criteria for measuring success and how to consider each idea. And this is where I kind of missed a little bit of something I should have told you about. When you are setting your creative challenges, you do need to know how you're going to, and, and, and your goal, how you're going to measure this. Is it going to be successful if you get the equipment up and running? Probably. Right? Probably. But that might not be the only part of your goal. You might have had another creative challenge of, I've got a heated customer, and I want to make sure that that equipment is functioning and that they are happy with the end result. Happiness to us is, well, we got it fixed and nobody complained to the boss. Sometimes for them it's, you know, hey, look, do you need anything else? Right? Do you need a hand with this? I know this impacted your day. Do you need me to, you know, remake the, the, the bed? Or whatever helps you get back on track as a clinician. 
but <clears throat> those measurements need to be put in place. You need to think about uh, how each of your ideas kind of weighs in to that success. So again, if you're talking about fixing something, it's probably not going to help you if one of the brainstorming things was, I need to go eat a sandwich, unless you feel like you're going to get a little low on your blood sugar, right? Or you haven't been eating for a while, and now you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do the job physically or mentally. But if it doesn't really weigh in in this case, give it a low score, give it a low rank, right? And you don't have to necessarily write a number by each one of these 50 or 40 ideas, but it's helpful. Depending on the outcome, you might have already figured it out. You might just be able to go straight to implementing the idea or ideas that came out from your brainstorming. If not, you're going to develop an action plan. You're going to break down those complex plans into a series, and you're going to break down the series into s simple steps. I'm going to do this. Now, I certainly would not tell myself or any technician that worked for me or any technician that I was mentoring maybe to say, well, break down all the steps and say, well, I am going to go walk over here. I am going to pick up a Phillips number two screwdriver, da, 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 da. Right? That's too simple. But break them down into, into really simple steps of, of, well, I've got to do this, right, before I do this. I, I don't know enough about that circuit or those boards, and I'm going to either go down to the shop and get our paper copy, I'm going to get online and get the electronic copy, or I'm going to call the vendor, right? And I'm going to ask them over the phone if they would provide some sort of technical support to me. Uh, that's a simple step not down to, I'm going to go pick up this screwdriver and I'm going to turn it counterclockwise or clockwise depending on what you want to do, tighten or loosen. Um, <clears throat> establish measurements such as this will happen by this time, right? This provides quality customer service, especially in our technical industry. If we say to ourselves at this point, and even all along this point, they want this fixed by when, and what's reasonable, what can we actually do? There might be some decisions that you have to make to call the guy that's on call, even though you're the late shift guy, right? You might have to tell them it can't be done because I'm going to need parts. Here's my action plan. I have figured out the best case scenario is I am going to work through this, but I'm going to communicate to you right now. I'm going to work through this, but if it needs parts, it's 5 o'clock in the evening. I don't know any supplier that supplies X, Y, or Z part, but I will order it. I will figure out a way to order it first thing in the morning, right? Improve your customer's expectations by telling them um, what you're doing in this action plan then do it. That's the simplest step. That's the slide that I didn't even know if I just wanted to rip off the Nike logo. Um, but you've done this. You've gone through this process as short as it might be or as long as it might be, um, depending on the situation and how you use it. So there are big projects in our lives, big things, big goals that we might want to achieve. <clears throat> we might need to achieve for our employment, for our relationships, just for, you know, say going on vacation for that matter, making sure that you actually have a plan on how you're going to get there, and what you're going to do, at least a little bit. But there are also short-term things that creative problem solving can come into play. I have tried to mention and keep interjecting the technical role because that's where I've spent the majority of my career in this profession. I, I still like to turn a wrench. Uh, I don't see one of the guys that works for me here, but sometimes I kind of bug him because I'm like, hey, can I help out with that? I actually I like it when he's not there sometimes because then I get to do part of his job because we overlap in some of our skills. But the creative problem solving <coughs> can certainly help you in your troubleshooting in your repair process or anything else, 
Uh, just kind of by a, a show of hands, who here has ever used a tool that wasn't the exact tool that you needed on a piece of equipment when you're conducting a repair? Okay, so that's part of the creative problem-solving process, right? You've said, oh, well, I've got to get this fixed. I don't have the tool handy or it will be, take too long to go and get it, so I'm going to use something that's acceptable, right? Hopefully. Or I'm going to do this because I can get it together now and the customer's happy, and then later I'm going to go back and, you know, take that screw out that I just destroyed the head on. But... Creative problem solving also help, has helped me a couple of times in weird and bizarre ways. And you guys have probably all had examples of similar things. But I'm going to share one, for example. I got thrust into doing dialysis years ago, right, as a dialysis service engineer for the VA. I didn't know a lot about dialysis. I knew kind of a little bit of theory, a little bit. Every other organization I worked at, dialysis was like a separate group where there were dialysis nurses or techs that did the maintenance on the equipment. So I, I did because I could provide uh, customer service at a time that we were in a shortage. I had a coworker that was out for a while because of some medical problems. And I realized that one of my hobbies actually applied to a lot of the water chemistry uh, issues in dialysis. I, I keep tropical, tropical fish. And uh, I'm a little bit of a nerd about it sometimes too. Right, honey? My wife's back there. She can agree. I've got tanks and in, in empty tanks just sitting in the garage waiting for me to someday just ring them online. And then I've got one right now in my son's room that I wish was not in his room. I wish it was in mine. But I say this because I applied something I knew about water chemistry to something I didn't know about or didn't feel like I knew much about in hemodialysis. And it helped me kind of bridge that gap a little bit. I still had to learn my trade a little bit. So um, part of this... Uh, discussion here, I wanted to bring up that you might be asking yourself, so what's, what's the advantage of creative problem solving versus just some other framework or whatever? These are, this is truly what I believe as far as cr creative problem solving, and there's some good evidence to, to support this as well, as well. Creative problem solving obviously helps you create ideas. One of the things that you might find in trying to resolve one problem is that you have a really good idea on that list of brainstorms or that brainstorming list that you're going to wind up using somewhere else. You're going to go, oh, man, this, this thing is not going to apply today, but it might uh, help me prevent this failure in the future. It may help me provide better customer service. It may help me do something in my personal life better, but it was just kind of just one of the things I had to write down in that list of 40 that I had to come up with. <clears throat> it is a documented plan, and I'm going to say... This is where there's some similarities with other processes. You're going to document your plan if you really have a plan, right? What did you do or what are you going to do? And, and, you know, it might be just the plan in your mind, right? Is it measurable? Yes. There's an outcome to it. It is done by this time, hopefully. Um, and other uh, frameworks also measure success at least hopefully. A SWOT analysis, for example, would measure your level of success after identifying your, your strengths and weaknesses. And, um, other processes or without a process. Specifically without a, this process of saying, I have identified that goal I've really specified what my goal is. Remember, that's like the first and most important thing is what's my problem? What's my real problem? Now, admittedly, there are times on like Thursday night or Friday night when you're, you've got vacation and you're sitting there saying to yourself, my goal is to get this done so that I can get out the door or 
to persuade them that it doesn't need to get done right now and I'm coming back on Monday morning or Tuesday morning or whatever and I take care of it. How are you going to be creative about that? Right? There are, that's not necessarily the goal that I usually live by, but there are certainly times when I'm like, oh my gosh. Last year it was, it was Halloween and I have two kids and I wanted to go uh, trick-or-treating with them. I was an imaging service engineer last year, and I worked until it was like seven or eight. It wasn't that bad, but a customer asked me, can you come in after our clinic hours and finish this PM, right, because they had been under construction and everything else, and it was the last day of the month, and I had to get it done, so I had to figure out how to get it done, and I kind of negotiated with them a little bit and said, you know, it's kind of Halloween. Can I come in a little earlier? Because it was an x-ray room that I had to do. It wasn't like I could just do it right after they closed and somehow enjoy watching my kids get a lot of candy and telling them they can't eat that much candy. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things that I said is at the beginning of this is I kind of want to go step through this with, say, a situation that you have, Right? And let's, let's get a little bit of participation from you guys on this. So you don't have to say, well, I need to, I, I'm worried about being shy or whatever. Um, but I want to I wanna get something from one of you guys. What, what do you see in your daily life? Personal, if you want to go the personal direction. Customer service, technical, engineering. And we'll walk through this process together, see what we can come up with. Now, maybe you've already solved the problem. Well, so the question is, do you think you have a problem that you want to go through the creative problem-solving process with? Do you have a problem with your job, something that you, your boss has asked you to do, your customers asked you to do, or your peers asked you to do? Do you have something that you would like to do differently in your life, right? That might be a little sensitive because we don't all know each other here. I've shared personal things with you guys a little bit. But if you have something about the healthcare technology management field, uh, that's what I'm asking. Okay, good. I don't know, I don't know how I to talk. Um, I'm trying to get into a management role, but I have the education, but it's hard to get experience because it's that big loop. <laughs> experience, but they don't want to hire you for it. Okay. Let's go back and let's walk through this process. So what I'm hearing is you want to get into management, say. You have the education, but you don't have the experience. And your concern is and you have some concerns because you feel like it's kind of a, a loop of which comes first, maybe. Education experience. So the first step is specify the problem. Is that really your problem? Is, is, that, a, is, that, is that really what you want to do? Okay, just as a side note, I'm going to just do a little survey here. Who here has been a manager and always likes being a manager when they've been in that position or who got out of management because they didn't like it? Just raise a hand if you fall into one of those categories. Okay. So I just want to help have the team help you identify what the, what the, what the problem is. Now, if you still think you, that's what you want to do. Okay. So you want to get into management. Why can't you get into management? Why can't you do it right now? What's the real problem? Now, you might have already stated it. I'm just putting this out there, but let's walk through the process together. And you guys can all chime in too, like, thank you. Okay, so the problem is you need to get some experience or that others don't think you have the experience. Which one is it? Both? Okay. Right, right, because you, you have a title and you talk about some activities and it looks 
probably a lot like other people who don't want to get into management, maybe, right? And their boss still comes to them and says, hey, uh, you're the expert on this, right? Or uh, you're better at this than I am, or I want you to get engaged, even though they don't want to get into management. So what's stopping you from doing it now? Is it other people? Is it people reviewing your resume, possibly, or your presentation of yourself on, say, LinkedIn? Maybe, I don't know, I'm just trying to, trying to come up with what's stopping you. I think the simple one here is, how would you measure success? Get into a position? I would challenge you when you do get into that position that you measure it by how well you do in it. And not the first three months, not the first six months, because there will be some things that organization, if you go to a new organization, will have challenges beyond the management scope. Don't get bogged down on the limits. I, 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 I've heard this several times in this field, and this is a great example of this, that we, we, we tend to think that somebody wants something that we don't have, right? Now, that's not always the case. I would say that, yes, there are many organizations that want education over experience, um, and I'd say that there are probably a lot more that want experience over education. But don't, don't bog yourself on, down on that. I guess we've got to figure out how we walk through the process of uh, exploring the problem. So does anybody have any ideas about what the problem might be or what, what data she may need? It is sometimes for many of us. But that's the, that's the weight. That's the weight for the guy to... I'll joke retire, right? The, the, the person leaves. The institution sees you in this case as the go-getter, the person that's always been in the committees or whatever. But that, there's some other, fo some other takes on this. You maybe have to move, right? Maybe you have to move to the institution down the street, to another state or whatever. Um, but that's, that's a risk, right? Is it a risk you're willing to take? You've got to answer that for yourself. Do you have some, something? Oh, okay. So... Um, <clears throat> What resources, other than, say, your manager relying on you, could you use? Conferences, maybe? I'm going to throw that out there. Really, networking with people here. Yes? I forgot about that. And actually, there are a couple of companies do the, that do that. They have the capacity to do that. Federal agencies like the VA does that in some management positions. <coughs> Trimedics does. Um, I think Aramark used to, didn't they? Mike, are you with Aramark? Um, so there's, there's those kind of opportunities to get the experience and you've actually got your job lined up for you, right? You know who your employer is because they're making an investment in you. As a matter of fact, um, my brother-in-law is doing a little bit of that as well in an engineer and training type program. He's getting the experience from the company that's He's, he's got to live in three great places in three great years. Um, <clears throat> after this year, he settles in to something that he'll basically, or that he'll apply for in that company. So, you may already be doing some of these things, but what I see is the value of uh, this, at least the resources like the conference and you doing something very daring and this is very commendable I you know afterward I think you all should probably ask her what she's doing right because she actually stood up and said I want to do this and that's not a popular thing sometimes right I want to move into management because some people are like oh my gosh that person's going to be whatever right yes see and that, that should be something that you, that most employers, you got to get through that HR gate sometimes, right? That most employers should recognize as demonstrating 
not only that you did your job, you punched in, you punched out, right? You did it well, but that you've gone above and beyond a commitment in your profession, but also that you're, you're working on leadership skills or you've developed enough confidence with the people that you lead, at least, that 51% or more voted for you, right? So we explore the path, then we ask how we can do this, right? How can you? I think there's been some suggestions out there. We'll kind of leave that, I think, we'll skip that for time's sake. Not to skip it, but we've talked about some of those things that how, how can you? You can wait for um, the right opportunity at your organization, right? You can um, move to another organization. You could actually, and I'll throw this out there, you could take a different role outside of your healthcare technology management profession as a manager, right? Certainly you're doing uh, to a degree as a leader in a biomed association. I'm just skipping through. We've done some brainstorming already. This is not a linear process necessarily, but now here's where we write down, we, well, we agree, first of all, to say, we're going to come up with 30 ideas. Or we're going to come up with 40 ideas. And actually, this might be a good exercise that we could all do, that you guys could all throw out ideas, but I need a scribe. What's that? No limit. Assassinate the manager. But who's the scribe? Wait, wait. We've got to first of all figure out how we're going to document this and how many we're going to document. I, I, I'm suggesting 30. Is everybody good with 30? Okay. Who wants to be the scribe? You want to be the scribe? You want to be the scribe. Great. Thank you. <laughs> no. There's a problem right there. I don't know if it resol it's resolved with a creative solution, but... Is there, oh, there you go. <laughs> Teamwork. Teamwork. Uh, problem resolved. See, look at how fast that worked. Okay. Now, oh, piece of paper. Teamwork. There you go. Okay. We heard assassinate the manager. Let's hear it from other people, too. So I would describe, I'd write down uh, wait up to three years and make the movement in those three years in, within your organization. Okay, we got to get 28 more. Let's do it. Talk to that manager's manager and say, I want this job. What can I do to get it? Talk to the manager's manager. Okay. More, ne more networking. Yeah, you've got a leadership role, so you can talk with your peers right? This guy, right? I, I think I need to talk to this guy too. Harrison. Get the CHTM certification. Very good. Jonathan has brought up something. I know Jonathan because we work together. Um, Jonathan has brought up something that you all should know. If you look at the Certified Healthcare Technology Manager certification, you, have to, you don't have to have the su title of supervisor. You have to have supervisory responsibilities or lead responsibilities. How that's interpreted when you apply, uh, apply your application, um, I'm not sure, right? It does, there are some definitions around that, but there's, there's one there too. So get the CHTM. Harrison? Find another planet that can support life. Okay, start fresh on another planet. So, <laughs> thank you. But see, that kind of keeps the creative juices flowing, right? Too many ahs and ums. I, I don't qualify. But Toastmasters is. Toastmasters actually has a leadership track specifically. So you don't have to go and say, I'm going to give a bunch of speeches, except for the ones you do in your club. Start your own company. Start your own company. <laughs> what better way to give you any title that you want, right? <laughs> and any role that you want at that point. Yes. 
and not just the recognition, but you, you get to actually know more about the healthcare system, right? Or healthcare in general by doing things like that. Or you just simply, let's just say, for example, uh, because uh, my wife and I pushed and said, what, what's, what's going on with the Scoutmaster? What's going on with the Scoutmaster? Uh, we weren't seeing scouts for my son. The, <clears throat> you, if you're the parent that does that, then sometimes you get asked to do it, right? Um, and we did. We did for a while. We moved. What's that? Two minutes? Okay. So there's another one. We might have to cut it because of time. There's, there's the thing. So Toastmasters, community, right? Get involved in the community. I heard the internal community, but I'm also adding external, you know. One last thing. George? We're not going to have time, um, but, but add certifications to that list. Let's make sure that you get that list. And sorry, I'm, I'm Dustin. You are Karen. If you guys wouldn't mind, you know, maybe catching Karen in the expo hall or as we leave the room and encouraging her, talking to her if she wants to talk about opportunities that she's not seeing. And I'm not, I'm not saying with your organization, don't... I'm, uh, you know, her boss might get a little upset that I would suggest that. But <clears throat> that's up to her and, and you to have that kind of conversation. But it takes a lot of guts, a lot of guts on two levels. You want to be a manager. Some of your coworkers are going to be like, really? I never want that, right? I don't even want you to do that, right? They're going to hold you down. <laughs> and then for you to come out in this room and say, I'm not where I want to be yet, that takes a lot of guts, but I think, from what I can see, there's a lot of support there. So you'll get that list. Follow these other steps. These will be uh, on the Tech Nation website somehow. I'm not sure. Uh, they did say that they'll have them on the, the website. So you can rem remind yourself, assemble and assess those ideas. See if there's commonality, something, some things you can work through. You might need to brainstorm a little bit more. Maybe with the BA, it's BAW, right? Yeah, with the BAW leadership or maybe your boss who get him on a good day when he's thinking he's going to retire, but he's not so upset that he doesn't want to see the hospital succeed maybe um, after he leaves. Make your action plan around that. Make sure that you have a goal. Like in six months, I'm going to make sure that I, whatever, get involved, whatever. Talk to somebody that's better at writing a resume. Not me. That's my, not my class. And then do it, right? Set the goal, do it. And then measure it. See if you've, you've done what you said you were going to do. Thank you, you guys. Uh, don't forget the Expo Hall starts two minutes ago, probably.